everybody, welcome to Pomeroy Art Academy. I'm your instructor, John Pomeroy, and I'm going to talk to you about my favorite pencils. I've got a bunch of them here, and I'm gonna do some demonstrations about what these particular pencils are all about in my animation, so let's give it a try. The first one right here is my um, go-to Prismacolor pencil. I use this an awful lot for our lessons. It's got a smooth quality to it. If I you know, just start drawing, it feels so comfortable. The only problem is I, it's hard to erase. I don't, I can't erase this as well as if I'm drawing with graphite because this is a, I don't know what the oil consistency is in this lead or whatever, but this is a Prismacolor Noir PC935. I've been using this an awful lot, but it's, it's got a nice, I call it, I describe it as creamy a creamy type of texture. And it's just really fun to work with. I, I, I can rough out drawings really quickly with it. It's just a fun pencil to work with. And One of the characteristics of a good pencil for me is how well does it travel over the surface of the paper? How smoothly? And as you can see, I'm just gliding away here. Years ago, one of my instructors, uh, one of the Disney Nine old men, he showed me a trick of how he holds his pencil. And I still hold mine today. He would hold it delicately by you know, between the uh, middle and index finger and thumb and use the pinky as kind of a, a balancer, an outrigger to kind of stabilize the line as he sailed across the paper. I had never drawn like that and I thought it was really terrific to see him do that. And I've been drawing like that ever since. So this is one of, this is a great pencil to work with. Now, another one, is my standby for, for animating a scene are Tombow 4B pencils. And um, I've been using these, oh boy, for the last 15, 20 years. To animate a scene, you know, if I am roughing something out, it's just so easy. It's, it's once again, it's a creamy type of line and it has a nice consistency. If I want to just blast through a scene, roughing it out, this is the pencil I choose. And usually, this, this point, I, I, I just sharpened this. What I normally do is when I'm roughing out my scenes, and I want to keep them loose and rough, and I don't want to get anything too tight right away, I will take my pencil, as a if you can imagine, I'll draw you the shape. There's a, a pointed pencil, there's the lead. What I normally do is I shave off the end part, and I like to work with a chisel point, so that my point has a slight diagonal edge to it, which allows me to get a, a wide line like that or a very thin line depending on the way I hold it. But chisel points are a great way for me to rough out a scene and keep it loose and fluid. And it also causes me to think in terms of shapes rather than just individual uh, features of legs and arms. I, I want to think in terms of the overall shape of the character and action. So using a chisel point helps me always consider action first for drawing a character. So that's another one of my pencils that I love using and I continue to use it to this day. Now when I was st first starting out um, 
in feature animation over at Disney, this is back in the 70s, there were a lot of, of uh, different variations. And I would look at the what the old masters did in the great days of uh, Disney classic animation. Some of them like to work in red. I would see drawings that were roughed out. And this is a, a Blick Studio pencil. Um, I think these types of red pencils are also uh, produced by Color Erase and a couple of other companies too. But they would rough out the shapes. They get a great feeling on the shapes. And it's almost like it caused them to keep it loose and to almost like it was sculpted. They would figure out the mechanics by doing these shapes. And I love checking out their drawings. Very loose. And you can get as dark as you want on this uh, you can, as you're trying to emphasize certain shapes and certain rhythms in the drawing. And then they would go in uh, sometimes with, this was a pencil I would use during, oh geez, during Rescuers back in the 70s, a, a barrel turquoise 2B. They would go in there and start to fine tune the drawing. trying to bring out the expression a little bit more. And I got to the point where I, I, love, I love looking at these drawings. I was actually trying to emulate that style. And when you copy other great artists, you know, it helps you find your own style. And that's important. You know, as the saying goes, when you stand on the shoulders of giants, you see that much further. So just hitting the shapes here, the basic shapes that are working. Eyebrows working. Get a feel for the forehead and that shape right there. So they, these were, you know, the combination red and the uh, barrel turquoise 2B. Great combo. Um, another combo was the blue, I would use a blue when I was working with Ollie Johnston on uh, The Rescuers. I was emulating him. He had a um, color erase blue, and I think he used either a black wing, which I also have, black wing pencil, and a color erase blue. And trying to um, emulate that style, I would copy, you know, use the same, the same types of pencils he was using and trying to feel out the form of a little girl. We worked for about two and a half years on, on that movie, The Rescuers, and I still remember watching him roughing out the character Penny, because he was my supervisor animator, and I was working with him and helping him with 
animating that character. He just had a real gift for getting really cute, beautiful drawings of that girl. A little space in the teeth. And he would work with that color erase. And once again, he was like sculpting those shapes just right. Just feeling out the forms. And then he would go in with his either his black wing or his turquoise pencil and just hit it just right. Almost kissing the paper. With the most graceful little subtleties. One eye, there, get the other eye. Subtle little things that he would get. And trying to make sure that I would accentuate little lines the way he did. The hair being very delicate. Just very wispy. using the same types of pencils. Little hair, little pigtails. Little collar. Little suspenders on her dress. brings back a lot of memories. So this would be another favorite pencil that I would use during that production. I kept using that through, oh geez, uh, through all of Rescuers and then Pete's Dragon and I think I through Small One and Fox and Hound. Um, there's another pencil that I like using um, for commission work. Um, when I'm doing commissions, um, this is a pencil, I mean, it's not something I would use ordinarily for animation. It's got a thicker line. It's a China marker. And uh, this is a waxy pencil that you can, you don't use a sharpener, you just peel back this string and it opens up the paper, outside paper liner, and you just pull at it and it rips off the perforated paper that's surrounding the lead. until you get to a fresh lead, and then you're able to draw, and it's, it's a, a lovely line. I just love working with this. It's fun, it's easy. The only, once again, this is, this is not a pencil for the faint of heart, because it doesn't erase very well. but it sure has a great line. I love the line work, the quality on this. And, it, and you can see that as I'm drawing here. I mean, it's just, it just flows. It's, lo it's creamy line, easy to draw with. You have to get used to it. It takes a little, a little while to get used to 
its consistency and uh, the quality. But it's a great pencil to use. Um, there are other pencils. I mean, I've got... Um, this is a, a type of pencil. I don't even know if they produce this anymore. It's got a nice quality to it. It's called a, uh, it's produced by the Eagle Company. It's called a drafting pencil. It's got a very thick lead. And if you get it down to a nice chisel point, I mean, it's great to rough out drawings. It's got a nice, nice feel to it. And, uh, easy to draw with. And you can shade with it and you can get, um, you get a nice fine line or you can get a nice wider line or you can get the side going when you wanted to shade something in. It's just a great pencil to use for sketching. Uh, you can actually use it, you know, for animating, for layout. Got some, it's got a great quality. You know, whether you're doing outdoor sketching, sketching cartoon characters, or, you know, any number of character designs, it's got a great feel to it. So this, um, Eagle Semi-Sealed Drafting Pencil is another good one. Here's another one that I use for, uh, it's a, a, a blue pencil, a Studio Bic pencil. It's got a nice line to it. It's fun to work out uh, rough poses. Much like the blue um, color erase pencil that I was using on Rescuers, this has got uh, a little bit different quality to it. It keeps me nice and loose. I can rough out a pose very quickly. and then go back in with my um, Tombow pencil and just nail these, these little poses down. It's important as an animator to find the pencil, aside from your drawing pad, of course, your uh, electronic pad that you would probably draw with also, but as, as far as uh, traditional 2D animators and animation, it's important that you find that pencil or pencils that you really love working with that feel comfortable to you. I'm doing a little drawing of Tig here, leaping for joy. So there's a lot of information here about pencils and how I use them. And you know what? There, somewhere there's going to be a tool, a pencil that's made for you. It's like a magic wand, you know, all the magic that comes out of it on the paper. So I hope that helped you. And if you like this video, share it with your friends and please subscribe to our channel. Bye-bye.